Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started with our service. Come on, y'all. Stand up and praise the Lord with us. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in oh, it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. This is Jesus, isn't it good to know why we come and why we praise the Lord and why we are so excited when we just hear the name of Jesus? If you don't know why, then we want to talk to you even more. We thank God for those of you who are watching this broadcast, this online stream from the worship area of the Unity Christian Church that's located in that beautiful city of Fayetteville, Georgia, where Jesus is Lord over our lives. Now, I don't know about that. That's it. You can give God some glory. You look so beautiful in the house of the Lord on this morning. Amen. And we're not going to belabor the time because there's nothing more important than giving God what's due to him. And we only begin our worship service with prayer. Amen. We want to be sure that the joy of the Lord continues to be our strength 
and the heaven doors are wide open. I'm going to ask Deacon Lamar Stigall if he will come at this time and give us our opening prayer, and then we will proceed as the Lord directs. Amen. But we know Jesus. Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah. Today is a day to be thankful. Tomorrow is a day to be thankful. And the day after that is a day to be thankful. Every day is a day to be thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, creator of this heaven and earth, the maker of all things. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, our Heavenly Father. We just thank you for being God, our awesome and mighty God, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, our Heavenly Father. We just give you thank now, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we lift your name on high, our Heavenly Father. We praise and worship you today, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to bless your church today, our Heavenly Father. Put us all on one accord, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, let our be a, let your will be our will, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for just loving us today, our Heavenly Father. We just thank you right now, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, bless the sick and shut in today, our Heavenly Father. So I need to feel your church today, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, they need you right now, our Heavenly Father. This church right now, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, bless the one that build this online, our Heavenly Father. Touch them, our Heavenly Father. Let them know that you that still only true and living God, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, you got all power in your hand. There's nothing we can do without you, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, our Heavenly Father. Bless our pastors today, our Heavenly Father. Bless the message that come forth today, our Heavenly Father. Let it be your words, our Heavenly Father. Not our words, our Heavenly Father, but your word, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we just just bless right now, our Heavenly Father. Whoever needs you, our Heavenly Father, you know who needs you today, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, that church right now, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, most of all, we thank you for your Son who died on that cross, our Heavenly Father, to save us from our sin, our Heavenly Father. We thank you for the blood that he shed, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we know that we're the nail that kept him on the cross, our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you today. We love you. We honor and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. God bless you, Deke. Thank you, sir. While you're standing, amen, let's read and open the scripture on today. Thank God that prayer is right on time. So many people are going through some things physically as well as spiritually and mentally, but the Lord is working it out. Two quick scriptures, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament, and I'll be reading these from the King James translation. The first scripture is coming from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. And the word of the Lord declares, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 and 4, also from the King James. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Holy word. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated as we prepare now to go just another step higher. In a time where we're going to ask the praise team to come forward and lead us in this time of praise and worship. We praise him and we continuously worship the Lord. So you heard the scriptures. They are warfare scriptures, but they are also scriptures of victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let him have his way. Come on, y'all. Stand up. Let's praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
I got the victory, hallelujah. Come on, you sing it. I got the victory, hallelujah. I got the victory. I got the victory, hallelujah. Do you have the victory? I got the victory, hallelujah. And every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. He is Lord, he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. He is Lord, he is Lord. I got the victory. I got the victory, hallelujah. I got the victory. I got the victory, hallelujah. Do you have the victory? I got the victory, hallelujah. I got the victory. I got the victory, hallelujah. And every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. He is Lord, he is Lord, every knee shall bow. You set me free. 
power of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Amen. We need your power, Lord. Send it on down. Send it on down. Amen. Thank you for that uplifting time of praise and worship and also a time of reflection. You know, those songs take us back, don't they? Amen. It takes us back to that old landmark, and we can remember how we used to call on the name of Jesus late into the night. Amen. And then something began to happen. Things began to stir up. And before you knew it, something hit you, and you had to move some part of your body because God is still in control. Amen. So we give God glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. And we are so excited about what the Lord Jesus continues to do in answer to believe in prayer. If you don't believe when you pray, then don't pray. If you do believe, then pray often. God is a good God. Amen. So let's have a word of prayer before we move into the word on today. Because the atmosphere is being sanctified. For God to move. Amen. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for all that has already taken place in your house and among your people, wherever they may be gathering and watching and viewing. God, we pray that your anointing is falling fresh in a special way. And now, Lord, we just ask that you would take control of my lips, my mouth, my heart, and my mind. Let me share the word that you have already ordained for this day and this time. And as I decrease, I pray that you would increase. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, all of the praise. We lift up a special prayer for those who are going through physically right now. Those who are in the hospitals, oh God, we ask that you would move in right now. Take control, bless, heal, and deliver. And we thank you for being who you are because you alone are worthy. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Good morning to all of the people of the Lord today. You look so beautiful in your socially distant setup. Thank God that we are yet here. We're yet on the wall. We're yet calling on the name of Jesus. So today, amen, we want to go into the word of the Lord, amen, and we know that, amen, people's attention span, especially when they are viewing online, uh, it gets a little shorter than when they're actually sitting in the room. So we believe in redeeming the time and going ahead and doing what God has given us to do, not hurrying or rushing, but being expeditious, amen. Amen. So let's open the word of the Lord today. Let's go into the New Testament, into the gospel of St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Reading two verses, verses 13 and 14, and I will be reading from the NASB translation, these opening verses on today. The gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. We find these words. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. While you're standing, let's pray our corporate prayer. Amen. And those of you who are viewing us, please pray along with us. Just repeat after me. And we all want to be on one accord as we seek the word from the Lord. Just say, Lord Jesus, please prepare my ears to hear your word. Prepare my heart to receive your word. Prepare my eyes to see that your word is alive. And prepare my body to be your temple for the living word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated once again in the name of Jesus the Christ. We want to speak to you 
from this subject, I want to talk to you about influence. Influence. One word. Influence. What does that word influence mean? When you do, and we love to define different words. Uh, one definition normally comes from uh, a dictionary and another one comes from a biblical application. But the word influence is the ability to have an effect on the character, behavior, and development of another person. Did you get that? Let me say it again. It is the ability to have an effect on the character, behavior, and development of another person. But instead of it being all about ourselves as Christians and born again believers, we realize that God gives us different platforms. We have business platforms. We uh, have social uh, uh, circles that we deal in and we can have uh, an influence no matter where we may be placed. But God wants our influence to be about Jesus. So when we are in the world, but we are what? Not of the world. God does not want us to think that uh, we can only demonstrate who we are and a spirit of holiness when it's just me, myself, and I. God wants us to put holiness on display. And we cannot do that unless we are integrated and unless we are a part of what's happening in this world. The world has enough influences, amen, that are negative from moral and character building points of view. But God wants to have someone who can offset some of the negativity with the positivity that he sends from heaven above. So when we come into Matthew chapter 5, we see that these few verses here, verses 13 through 16, is what we want to focus on. They follow Jesus' teachings to his followers. We call it the Beatitudes. And as Jesus has told them, blessed are you when you do this. Blessed are those who do this. And after he had told them all about what they needed to do in order to be blessed, he comes with verse 13. And then he says, you are. I want you to look at these words now. He didn't say you will become. He's talking to those who say that they believe in him, those who have faith in him. He says you are the salt of the earth. And see, when Jesus is using the term salt, you have to understand that even though we use salt today for many means, but back then salt was very precious. It was very uh, 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 expensive. It was something that people didn't just take for granted. They didn't, didn't just walk into the store, uh, buy a box of salt and just throw it over their shoulder and, and then don't worry about it. No, even Roman soldiers were sometimes paid with salt. That's where the phrase comes from, he's not worth his salt, or he's worth her, or she's worth her salt. It comes from that period of time when people understood the value of salt. And see, salt uh, is something that Jesus says we are. So what does it really mean to be salt? Salt adds flavor. Anybody ever tried to cook something without uh, uh, salt? And you know, when they put you on these different diets, now they say, you got too much salt in your diet. You need to change your diet. You need to uh, put some of the salt away. Uh, how many have tried to just go cold turkey and not use any salt after you've been accustomed to having a certain flavor on a certain dish? It just doesn't taste the same, does it? Because our taste buds have been come accustomed to that salty flavor. Well, what if that salty flavor is positive for God? And then when God spirit is missing we can say wait a minute something is missing here but when God's spirit is not in operation too many times we people just move right along with the program so it means that there's not enough salt there's not enough value there's not enough flavor of God's type that's being spread out throughout these communities throughout our nations throughout this world so salt as flavor and Christians must be flavorful people we must have the right type of flavor when we come into an atmosphere. You can't come in there down and somebody say, oh, here come that person. We don't want to be around them. No, you got to have the right type of flavor. 
so that when you get in there, your words can be received. And when you have the right influence, then things can begin to become shaped in a way. And the taste will begin to permeate itself throughout whenever and wherever you are. Salt acts as a preservative. Salt was used to preserve meats and to slow things that were about to decay. They said, put some salt on it. If you want to last, put some salt on it. So when you find your spirit beginning to decay, you're beginning to become a little weak. You got to ask yourself, am I losing my saltiness? Is my taste but am, am, Do I have enough what I need? This word gives us flavor. It gives us salt. It gives us a preservative. It gives us strength. To be able to fight against everything that the devil throws our way. Salt is used to melt coldness. By ever going out in wintertime and your sidewalks are frozen. Uh, your, you know, they say, well, get you some hot, well, get you some salt. If you got some salt, put some salt down. Salt will melt the ice. See, when we come into a place, amen, and it's cold in there because Satan has had his way, we bring some heat up in that place. And we melt out stuff that should not be there. We need to thaw out some atmospheres today. We need to go into a place, amen, where Satan is just running rampant and everybody is all frozen up and following after Satan. It's time for us to go in there and put a little salt in there. See, if we can't start melting away some things. And salt is used to heal wounds. Anybody ever been wounded and needed a healing? We get hurt sometimes. But this word, and, and we are supposed to be the ones who come in and can apply spiritual medicinal properties into the atmosphere where there's a lot of hurt going on. There's a word from God that needs to be spread. The Lord said, you are the salt of the world. You are the salt of the earth. We are the ones who are supposed to be able to come in and to deal with the world's condition because we have Jesus on our side. Jesus didn't say, amen, we will be. He said, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, if you are no longer who you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus, if you begin to conform to the things of the world, you don't have anything to offer that can melt coldness, that can heal sickness, that can take control of atmosphere. You don't have anything to offer when you begin to act like everybody else. Don't live the word. Then, If we don't live the word, how can we talk it? How can we speak it? How can we point somebody to the word and they're looking at us and say, I read it, but where, what do they have to do with me? You don't live it. How can we be salty if we lose our taste? If salt loses taste, how can it be made salty again? It's difficult. It's hard. And see, back doing this uh, era during this time when Jesus was writing that people would get their salt from, you know, some of these seas like the Mediterranean Sea and they would go in and they would be able to separate uh, the, uh, the salt modules and those things that, that contributed to them being able to use the salt. But when that salt flavor went away and it was uh, 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 controlled by the other aspects of it, it was no longer any good. So all they did was what? Throw it away. And what God is saying to us, don't be thrown away. Don't run this race knowing what you have available to you and then come up short and don't endure to the end because the Bible tells us that we must endure to the end in order to be saved. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 33, the Bible says this, do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals. If you want to remain salty, you got to know who to hang around. You got to know who to associate yourself with. The Bible says bad company can corrupt good morals. Now, if you are really salty, it should be the other way around. Good company should be able to pull and add some saltiness into the situation. But you got to know your own strength. And if you hang around bad stuff too long, you can become desensitized to what you see and what you hear. And then you can begin to conform to this world and take on the very nature of where you are. 
and then you miss out on your saltiness, and when you reach for it, it's no longer in your pantry. You're looking for, I thought I had some salt over here. Jesus, where are you? Well, you lost your saltiness. I'm waiting for you to get your saltiness back. I'm waiting for you to trust me some more. I'm waiting for you to call on me first. I'm waiting for you to look to the hills from where your help is going to come from instead of you looking all around and not looking to me. Do you got to have this salt? And then Galatians 5, verses 7 through 9, lets us know that we got to hold on to what we begin with. Paul is writing to the church at Galatia in Galatians chapter 5. In verse 7, he said, you were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? He didn't say what, did he? He said who? That means there's some people, there's some folks, there's some influences that can hinder you. Who hindered you from obeying? obeying the truth. Those people that were beginning to teach these collations that the resurrection of Jesus was not real. That it was just a story that was made up. Paul said, who hindered you now from obeying the truth of who Jesus is and from the gospel that you have received? He said, this persuasion did not come from him who calls you. And then he says, a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. See, you don't have to get all the way in there and say, well, at least I don't do everything that they did. No, but if you keep hanging around things long enough, that little leaven that get on you before you know it is going to work itself in there. And your whole outlook, your whole mindset is going to start to become watered down. You're not going to be on fire for Jesus like you used to be. You're not going to be sold out to the Lord like you used to be. Because when you hang around with people that want to plant seeds of doubt in the word of God and cause you to doubt who he is in your life, then you begin to open yourself up for leaven that can erode what God is already building up in you. Talking to you about influence. See, there are different types of influences. And see, Jesus said, we are salt, but if we lose our taste, if we lose our flavor, then we are not good for the master's use. And then verse 14 shifts now. He shifts from uh, salt to light. Now he says, you are the light of the world. He didn't say what? You will become. You may be. If you are a born-again believer and you sold out to Christ, he said, you are the light of the world. And our mission then must, to, uh, must be to uh, chase away darkness. The purpose for light is to move darkness out of the way. See, darkness is not powerful enough to overcome even the smallest amount of light. But light can chase away a whole room full of darkness. If you go into a dark room in the, mid, in the middle of midnight and it's totally dark and you just strike one match, that one match is going to put light in the area that it can reach. If you got a flashlight, it's going to chase even more darkness away. Can you imagine if we all go in there with our little Holy Ghost field, gospel flashlights into a period of darkness, how much darkness can we chase out of the atmosphere? How much darkness can we chase out of America? How much darkness can we move out of God's word and let his light begin to shine like he designed for it to be? See, light is our mission. He said, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You ever driven into downtown Atlanta at night and you see all the lights and you just look at the skyline and you can't hide that. When you come over that little hill or uh, 85 going north and you look at that skyline, you don't hide that. It's all what? Lit up. And the Lord said, if we are where we are supposed to be, there won't be any question about whether or not he's in the atmosphere. Because our light is going to be on full display. And he said, if we are like sitting on, the, on a hill, a city that's on a hill, that's how he wants us to be. When we shine, everybody should be able to see us and they won't miss us. He said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15, nor does anyone light a lamp. And put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So when you light a lamp, why would you put it under a basket? Don't even light it. If you're going to light it, you want to put it on an elevated position where it can give off more light. And he said, we are supposed to be like that lit lamp that's on a lampstand and give light not just to that room. He said, what? To the whole house. 
your whole family, your whole uh, co-workers, a uh, uh, neighborhood, wherever you go, your light should be shining bright enough that it cannot be hidden. How do you let your light shine? It's not about you walking around with your Bible every time you go out of your door saying, here I come. Here I come. See me? See? See my Bible? See my Bible? No, it's what? It's what you live. What you live. You don't have to convince anybody who you belong to. They're going to tell you who you belong to based on who you represent every day. Oh, my God. You can act good when your parents are, I'm talking to some of the young ones now, when your parents are looking at you. But when you think you can get away with something, sometimes there's another voice. You know, there's another voice that comes in and say, well, you know, Sally down the street is having fun. Why don't you slip on that? Their mom told you, don't go nowhere till you finish that, that last chapter. I'll be back. When I come back, that chapter should be, well, you got a whole lot of time. Just go on down there and see what's going on. You go down there, and the next thing you know, there's a drive-by. And next thing you know, somebody's gotten hit. And you were there when you weren't supposed to be there. How would that make you feel? Just by walking in disobedience. See, God says to us, the light that we shine is supposed to shine over the whole house. And then he said, verse 16, last verse, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works. They see the good stuff that you do. They see it. And you want them to pat you on your back, don't you? No, you got to finish reading. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You don't do it for, for your personal satisfaction and glory. You do it for God's glory. If you're doing it so that you think people would tell you that you're a super saint, you're a super believer, you're a super Christian, you have totally missed the whole boat. You need to go back and look for some more salt and another salt shaker. You need to go back to the altar and ask God to work on me afresh, God. I miss what the real purpose of these blessings and this anointing is. The purpose is to glorify you. The purpose is to lift you up in my life. So the, so the Christian must be a distinct person. We must stand out. And in these pictures of salt and light, the whole emphasis is on salt is needed because the world is rotting and decaying. And if we as Christians also join in in that rotting and decaying, then we won't be doing any good. Light is needed because the world is in darkness. And see, Jesus gives us a privilege, but he also gives us a responsibility. When he calls us light, because he said about himself in John 8 and 12, Jesus spake, spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So he said we are to be light because we are to follow him. So when we continue in our walking and the light that's in the world to chase away darkness, we can never affect the world for Jesus by becoming like the world. We cannot affect the world for Jesus by becoming like the world. Salt is the opposite of corruption. It prevents corruption from getting worse. Light gives the gift of guidance so that those who have lost their way can find their way home. God recognizes the power of influence. And he wants us to have the Holy Spirit that leads us to have the type of influence upon his world that he has already desired for us to have. We can work together for the good of God because of what he has already done for us. We can withstand negative fears of influence and we can promote positive fears of influence when we allow Jesus to be Lord over our life. Now, I don't know about you, but somebody said, the devil is the God of this world. And that's what the Bible calls the little G-O-D. That don't mean that he's got any power over you. Just like the Egyptians uh, treated dogs as if they were gods. It's the same thing. He's just another false one that people have grabbed hold to because they don't want to yield to the real God. They don't want to let, let the influence of the Holy Spirit resonate through them, but not so for us. The Lord said, we are the light. We are his soul. We have influence if we only let Jesus shine through us. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you today. 
So whenever you think about who Jesus is and what he's already doing in your life, a smile should come on your face. You should realize that the promises that the Lord have given to each one of us, they are true, and the Bible says they are amen. It is so. And the enemy cannot cancel out what God has already blessed. When you are blessed, you need to tell somebody, I'm blessed and I know that I'm blessed. And if you want to know how blessed I am, listen to what this word of God is saying to you today. That's the type of influence that God wants us to have. That's the type of influence that he wants us to walk in and bathe in and live in and swim in and stand in and get victory in because he alone is worthy to be. For everything that we do, it's not for us. It's not for our glory. It's for his glory. Every blessing that you have, you should give God praise and glory for it. You should tell somebody, I just received a new raise. I just received a good raise on my job. God, thank be to God. I just got a new house. Thanks be to God. I just got a new car. Thanks be to God. I just got a new bicycle. Thanks be to God. I just got a new pair of skates. Thanks be to God. Just got a new baseball bat. Thanks be to God. I just got my healing. Thanks be to God. I just got all that I've been asking for and believing God for. Thanks be to God. His influence. Somebody say influence. Let God influence you. Let him touch your mind when you don't know what to do. Open up this word. Ask him for insight, knowledge, and wisdom, and he will grant it to you. If you're listening to this message today, you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about who's calling us to be his light and his salt. For those who profess him, you need to understand that he's saying that this is who you are to be. So the converse of that is if we are not doing that, then we don't really belong to him. But if you are listening to this message today and you're not saved and you find yourself doing things that you know you shouldn't do, but you just don't have the strength to resist. Nobody does in their own power. That's why he gives us his Holy Spirit. You can't have the Holy Spirit unless you have received Jesus Christ into your life, which means you're living beneath your privileges. You've been defeated when you should be victorious. So if you are listening and you desire to give your life to the Lord Jesus today and you're not saved, if you're watching this stream, I ask that you just close your eyes, pause right wherever you are. If you're in the room today and you're not saved, you desire to give your life to the Lord. I ask that you stand where you are. We're going to pray this prayer of salvation and repentance. And when we pray, we believe and know that God hears us. If you don't believe that he hears you, don't pray. If you pray, know that he does hear. I think we said that already. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So if you desire to give your life to the Lord, I ask that you just repeat this prayer after me. And the Bible says, if you mean what you say, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, then you will be saved. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. The things that's wrong, I will no longer do. Whatever is right, that will I do. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I thank you, Jesus, for being resurrected for me. I thank you, Jesus, that whenever I come up a little short, I know that when I pray and repent that I am forgiven because you are my advocate with the Father. Now I receive my salvation and I am saved because of who you are and what you have done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. For those of you who are in this room today and those of you who are viewing, we want to pray this closing covering prayer. 
we all have need some time to go back and reflect on who we are in Christ. When we were transformed, we were not only transformed by our bodies, but we were first transformed by the renewing of our minds. When your mind is changed, your body will act differently. You will be able to bring every thought into captivity when you pray and ask the Lord to take control of that thought. If you don't ask him, that's just you out on your own. But if you're here today and you desire to stand under this prayer, I know we all have needs. We have needs. But the Lord wants us to be influential. He wants us to be a vessel for him. And then he blesses us and gives us all that we need because we're connected to him. If you desire to stand under this prayer, just stand right where you are. We're going to go to the throne of grace right now. There's so many people that's hurting. But I want you to understand that we have a master. We have a Lord. We have one who cares about us. And he is the light of this world. Father, in the name of Jesus, for those who are standing here, those who are yielding themselves under the sound of my voice by way of technology. I pray right now, oh God, that you hear our cry. We are calling on you, Lord, because we need you. We desire to be salt and light in this earth. Father, there are some things that we have been attacked with that's trying to hinder our usefulness for you. We reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak wellness. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. We speak victory over all aspects of our life, over our families, God, over all that you have given us to do for you. We walk in the light where we have, you've already set us free. We're coming out of all forms of darkness right now. We're chasing it away by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. We speak to that weapon right now. You have no authority. The weapons of our warfare are carnal and they are mighty through God. Strongholds are falling right now in all of our lives. And we are walking in the victory. And now, God, we give you praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And Father, now, as we have gathered here in your name, we thank you and bless you for all things. Thank you for the technology. Thank you for those who work so diligently, oh God, to continue to help us to do things in a way that will be quality for you. I ask that you would continue to bless each one of your people in every area of service right here at Unity Christian Church. And as we go down from this place today, but not from your presence, we pray that you will continue to bless and cover until we assemble once again. In your name, we give you glory. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. We go in peace and we sin no more. Stay tuned for the announcements. God bless you. You are dismissed in the name of Jesus. Say amen.